Hey guys, what's up? This is Panstar Dragon, and today we'll be doing a patch 5.2 rundown of the changes. Basically, trying to get in my head, giving you insight, uh, what I think is going to happen, uh, some champions, maybe if they're viable or not. And also, I do relatively want to make this a fast video, unlike my other video, where I just kind of ramble on. Um, so I got a, th a few things planned. Also, there's a TLDR at the end, so if you do want to see... You know, just get a skim of what I think about the notes or whatever. Then check that out too. Um, it's like a minute, so it's pretty good. Uh, so with that being said, let's get started. So the removal of Deathfire Grass is now gone. Like, DFG is gone. I'm, you know, I'm actually kind of... I dislike this change because, honestly, um, I play junglers, right? Um, they're tanks. And I really don't care if I get bursted because I probably won't die from a DFG player. Um... But, maybe if you're an AD carrier squishy, you might be mad. Um, you also would build Banshee's Veil, of course, too, if they had a DFG. Honestly, didn't see there was a big problem with DFG. I don't like the fact that they cha they got rid of it. Um, also, I played more Kaiser Jungle, and that is, like, one of his core items is DFG. And so, I really don't like that. And also, it, make, it, has, it adds a fun element to the game um, if you're the guy killing people, so... I mean, if you're the guy dying, of course, it's not that fun to be one-shotted, but if you're the one killing people, it's really fun. So this is gone, um, and, you know, champions like Katarina, Vagar, like, uh, LeBlanc uses it too, yeah? But she can still one-shot people without it. Um, they all kind of get a deep, a nerf. Um, I know Ari kind of gets a nerf, because if she didn't land her charm, she still had her DFG and her base damage to one-shot people uh, with, it. well, her full spell combo, so... Yeah, um, but she did get a buff, and we'll be talking about that pretty soon. Right here, overlapping crowd control effects. Um, you'll probably notice this change right here, uh, where you could like flash Zonia's during like an Alistair Q or Blitzcrank Cook. Um, I'm pretty sure you can still Ezreal E out of things. Yeah, but you could flash like say if Blitz grabbed you, uh, you f and then you flashed away. Um, yeah, Blitz would grab you, you'd flash away, but you still get knocked up. That's basically what's going on with this thing. So it's kind of cool. Attack move, command, and stealth, whatever. Now, Tristana has a bunch of things, and I'm going to be going over some things. So, attack, obviously, some stats have been lowered, um, which is really interesting. But uh, also, her late game is kind of, yeah, her late game got kind of nerfed. But her, her, but her laning phase has gotten a huge improvement, and I'll be showing you why. The range right here was actually is actually 671 at late game and 703 previously at the uh, late game but now it's like 671 um this is unchanged and okay so my notes say right here um basically her e her e damage is going to do somewhere around uh, where is it okay so this right so you got 60 damage um and for Every time you attack them, you get 25% more damage onto it, up to four times. So that's a that's a hundred percent. That's time. That's times two more damage onto the enemy. And since it has a base damage of 60, this is how much you're gonna do if you do four hits when you put the explosive charge on it. Um, so basically, you're gonna do 60. All oh, right, hold on. You're basically gonna have 22. Wait. So you have 15 from runes. No, wait. No, no, no. no. That's kind of wrong because you have attack speed runes. You actually have 8.5, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, let's assume it's 8.5 attack damage. Um, plus 4 from your Masteries. Plus 7 from the Dorn's Blade. I think I got the math wrong. Um, I don't really care. Um, I think this is right, though. And then so you times this by 0.5 because of your bonus attack damage ratio. And then you plus 60. And then you have a 69.75 damage um at level one but if you attack them four times so that's times two you have 140 damage uh what is this a, a, a 140 damage skill onto the enemy and that's insanely huge her old e used to do only 80 damage but now you go auto attack e for auto attacks and like basically if you put the explosive charge on the enemy they'll probably run or like if you get the explosive charge on an enemy and like nami lands a bubble then they're going to take a hell lot of damage now um this is extremely huge so basically if tristana puts an e on you you can't trade with her anymore so you have to run away or you're going to take a lot of damage um and if you get locked down whoa you're going to just take insane amounts of damage now 
like obviously AP ratio kind of got lowered. Um, it also scales into uh, more bonus attack damage. So once you're building that Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer, you have a pretty good burst on her E now. Um, also, physical damage is pretty good. Eh, actually, not really, but it's more of the bonus attack damage scaling. So that's what you're looking for. Uh, you can also now detonate the charge with Rocket Jump. Um, now let me explain the Rocket Jump changes. Uh, so this is what I think it's trying to say right here. Um, you can get up to 180% more damage on her W. So what I'm theorizing is her dumb in the laning phase, you probably get two points in the W just to burst them more. Um, also, so uh, yeah, you get you might want to do two points in it and start maxing out Q for the mid game. Um, let's see. They also kind of nerfed the damage per level and AP ratio is obviously gone, but whatever. So what I'm theorizing, so since you do 140 damage at level one with E and let's say you get a point at W at level two, you have an insane amount of burst, uh, that you can do in all in. So it's, she's really scary. I think at level two in her laning phase is incredibly strong. So let's see. So you do 80 damage, um, times 1.8. If you have four stacks of E charges on then of course, um, then you'll be doing 140 damage plus 139, which is 283 plus your auto attacks, uh, the 283 damage at level two with just only spells. That's extremely high. And you will see a lot of Tristana's probably, Tristana is probably all in, like let's say Leona or something, or something like that. Uh, so yeah, you just have to watch out for this insane amount of burst damage that she's gonna do at level two. I'm pretty sure she's going to still max out Q second because this kind of scales winky wonky. And yeah, you're still going to be an AD carry. Obviously, in team fights, you're not going to jump in unless you can clean up. Um, but this, this, these two changes seem like they increase her laning phase a hell of a lot. Um, and her late game is still there because she still has the range and attack speed from Q. So I think she's going to be a really good champion. Next up, we're going to be talking about Ari. All right, so. What's up with Ari? Um, let me just look at something. So right here, I did a. I'll go over this in a bit, but right over here, I did some calculations. Basically, what it's saying here is you actually do more damage than you would if you charmed the person before, as they did remove uh, the DFG from charm. So uh, this actually, I actually did some calculations. We'll do it right now. So you do 140 damage times 1.6. And then you times it by 1.2, and you do this much amount of damage. The 1.2 comes on the charm. Um, but now, since they increased the damage to 170, it's going to do 170 times 1.6. It's going to do four more damage. Whoopee. Four more damage is pretty decent. You are going to do less because the AP ratio is gone. Uh, or wait. Yeah. Um, the AP ratio... Uh, is amplified by the 20% damage, so that's what I'm not in taking this calculation. Um, so that's the only thing. Uh, basically, uh, this got AP ratio got buffed a bit. The base damage on it got bigger, but um, you know she's just not going to do as much damage without landing the charm. So it's kind of it kind of sucks. Uh, she's not more of an assassin, but now. What I'm thinking that she's more like now is with this change right here, Ari now gains a massive movement speed boost while her orb is traveling that rapidly decays over time. I think she's going to be more of a poke champion because with this in here, uh, she doesn't she can go close and then run away um, since she has a movement speed. So she's going to be extremely kitey and pokey, and that's what I'm thinking. Obviously, she can't one shot people anymore with the removal of DFG and her charm, but. I mean, she's probably going to do some damage in team fights. You know, she still has a W and this Q, which gives you an escape. And yeah, it just looks really pokey to me, honestly. Um, and really kitey too. So I don't, I honestly think she's going to be, might be really OP. Well, OP since you can never catch her with the Q uh, if this is up and like she gets a massive movement speed and she has R now too. So she's going to be really hard to kill. Um, either it's going to be a buff, uh, to her pokey style and a, like obviously a nerf to her assassin style. Um, but we'll have to see what people are, are starting to do right here. A colleague can no more go QRE. She has to do QR auto attack and then another Q. And then if the enemy gets away, which is probably most likely she'll have to dash again. Um, I mean, this has happened. They added this like 
not when she was released. They added this a bit later after she was released. So that's what's going to be like. Um, she was like decent. This helped. This obviously helped a lot. But right here, 100 less range. Ooh, that might hurt. Um, is she still going to be a good champion? Probably a niche pick. I don't think she's going to be as OP as she was before. Uh, but that's about it. Um, I don't think she'll be number one for sure with with those nerfs though. She'll be like maybe not in the top, not in the tier list at all. All right, so Tibbers. Uh, so I got some notes here. Um, this is interesting. She gets ten less armor. Okay, so this is the only stat you're going to be looking at is this ten right here, versus this um versus this twenty because you don't max this out at all. You only get it maxed out when you're level eighteen. So you're not looking at this or this. You're looking at the ten, ten. So ten magic resistant armor less. Now. Right here, when Annie casts Molten Shield, Tippers gains a 300% movement speed to gain over 0.75 seconds. Um, it's kind of cool, uh, but you don't... Like, I guess it can, like, finish off people, catch up with people, and do it. The thing is, Will, with Annie's Molten Shield, um, you use it to charge your stun. You don't really use it any to for Tippers. You don't really use it for, like, giving him the buff, because right here, it also says Tippers now also receives the benefits of Molten Shield when Annie casts his wild these up. Um, so he gets more armor and magic resist. But, of course, the thing is, he's only getting 10 armor and magic resist since you're leaving at level 1. Also, people aren't going to auto-attack the Tibbers because there's no point, so they won't, they won't take the damage from uh, the thorn mail Annie kind of has with Molten Shield. So... All of this, like, this is the only cool thing that's interesting, but it kind of feels like a small stat nerf in a way since this got reduced. Uh, so I think it's just a really, really little nerf, but it's okay. It's all right. She's still going to be good. Um, obviously, she's still, she's pretty good right now. She's in, like, LCS, all these things. Um, I haven't, I don't see her that much except when I see Anibot. He's the only one who plays her, so that's about it. Right here, Azir, nothing really changes. Um, this is just a, like, tooltip. Uh, I think it's a tooltip. Yeah, it's a, just a tooltip uh, thing. Right here, um, Cassiopeia. She gets a, looks like a big nerf, like the mana changes. I honestly don't play Cassiopeia. I haven't actually played her since the changes to her, like her uh, passive. Um, but basically, this may hurt her harassing earlier i'm pretty sure it's fine in the late game but what i'm looking at is a 50 mana cost e versus a 35 because you would max q um you're also looking at, at an 80 mana q spam later in the game although of course having this this actually does a lot of damage in lane so if you landed it it really hurt and then of course you get harassed with twin fangs so that's a lot of damage um if this also hurts her later in the game where her um e and Q start using a lot of mana, you might be looking at Archangel or Roa build into her. Um, but the thing is, you're still using your E to last hit, so you're getting 3% max of mana restored from last hitting with though. Uh, but if it does, I'm not sure how this is going to affect her again, but if this doesn't hurt her mana cost, like, you know, you don't feel it as much, You can't. it's there, then she's obviously still going to be a really good champion. Apparently she has a high win rate, and apparently she's like banned in EU or something. Um, I don't see her that much, uh, but I know she's really popular and really strong. Or uh, people have said that. All right, Fizz. All right, there's a lot of things I gotta go over. Crap. I really want to make this a quick video, but it's already five minutes. Okay, so his Q, ooh, 0.3 AP ratio nerf, base damage nerfed. Um, I know doesn't look that great to level up, to be honest, anymore. I mean, you get the utility of cooldown, but uh, right here, I'm not sure about this one. Uh, usually when Riot does a change like this, they usually kind of fuck up. And what I mean, like, the Syndra stun, apparently it was way too small. Uh, so they increased it this patch, you'll see later. Um, but right here, this is I'm thinking, let's say I queued Graves, uh, and he dashed down, it won't do damage. Because usually when Riot do a change like this, they kind of fuck up. Um, anyways, this looks like a shitty skill right now. Not the best AP ratio on it. Um, the base damage, it's it was only 30. Now it's 15. Now you do 60 less damage at max rank. Eh, whatever. Eh, it kind of hurts. But the AP ratio, of course, hurts a lot to AP Fizz. Now, I'm actually looking at this. This is really interesting. Um, so they converted his passive damage to his W, the active on hit. And so it actually does 8% missing health as magic damage. So what would happen is you'd E someone. 
um, and then you'd auto attack, and then you'd Q them, so that's 16% missing health as magic damage, which is really interesting. Um, so, and also the base damage is increased. And now on his passive, it actually just says a flat amount of AP damage right here. They also remove the AP damage right here too. Uh, so the only things that really have big AP ratios are his E and his R. Um, also, Fizz's ulti gets DFG. <laughs> Gets a DFG active, which is <laughs> which is I guess good. Um, also, a hit ev each champion that is hit by his ulti is affected. So, you know, but you're an assassin, so you're probably going for one target. Now, anyways, what I'm theorizing is you might see a fizz on hit build like a bruiser. Uh, that's the only thing I could see that being viable. Someone will try it, but I don't. I just can't see fizz being a good champion anymore with all these AP ratio hits. Um, yeah, all these AP ratio hits. I mean, sure, he gets DFG, but it's only 20%. And, yeah, I just can't see it. Unless he's, like, Bruiser Fizz on hit uh, with this active, of course. Because all of his AP ratios suck, so... Yep. I think you're not going to see him anymore. I don't think he's a good champion as AP. Uh, Kha'Zix gets a tooltip fix. Now, Nidalee. Okay, Nidalee. This is interesting. We can actually do jungle Nidalee now. I mean, you could do it before, but now with this hunted, you get bonus damage on your Q. You get another swipe, I think. Or no, it's a pounce, sorry. Um, and you also get movement speed, so you kind of get more faster clears in that sense. You also pounce the camps. Uh, fast, yeah, again, traveling faster equals faster clears. And biggest thing of all is takedown. Now, let's say you're Nidalee, mid Nidalee, or top Nidalee, and you're trying to get away from the enemy team. And you want to juke. What you do is you queue a camp and then you just pounce to it. Pounce to it. That's a 700 range leap, gap close, or whatever you would like to call it. And you get out and that, like, okay, so say you're going, you're on the red side and there's a Baron buff. You queue that Baron buff and then finally you're out. You also get the movement speed. So while you're running away, you get 30% more movement speed. This is a really interesting buff and definitely I think Jungle Nidalee is going to be a thing. I think. Maybe. I don't know. Um, it already kind of is a thing. Some people tried it and some people played it. It's like a niche pick kind of thing. It's not... It's really uncommon, but people do it. Rek'Sai. So, you're looking at 165 damage versus 225 damage. This is 225, by the way, because you've hit three times. And this is 100, 165. So... And also his base damage on his W gets nerfed. Which, this is actually what people were maxing out was W second because it had extremely high base damage. And he also did damage to a lot of people. You could also on Burrow, Burrow, you know what I mean, uh, and hit everyone. Uh, right here, I don't think this means a lot because I think you'll knock up everyone once in a team fight. And you probably still will with this change until you get it to level 5. Maybe like twice, but team fights usually go like 6 times. Uh, for six seconds, and that after that six seconds, it's usually decided who won the team fight already, so it doesn't matter at that point. So, is Rek'Sai still going to be good? I don't think he's going to be number one at all. I listed him in my tier list as number one, but I don't think he'll be top five anymore. Uh, unless he can... Because it looks like his base damage is really weak right now. and uh, It's just like, oh, okay. He still has his regen, but I just think... Um, maybe he might... He might still be good because he has a CC and all this stuff, but his damage doesn't look there, and I don't think he's going to be top 5. So there's a fix right here. There's, they actually fixed the E because it was a bit the stun. Like, you know, when it would stun someone and hit someone with the ball, it was a bit smaller, like I said earlier, and yeah, that's about it. They fixed that finally. That's good. And right here is Zed. Uh, so, Zed, I don't think this is going to hurt him that much, but... When he's death marking somebody, you might lose maybe one auto attack or something when you're chasing somebody. Maybe that's it. I'm not sure uh, how much this is going to affect him. When looking at numbers, it's really hard to say. But you might just lose one auto attack when you're death marking somebody. But that's about it. Um, he'll probably still be number one. Or not, not number one. He, may, he might be in the top uh, five for a middle lane. All right. All right. Uh, um, next up is the jungle items. So right here. This change right here. This hurts my route for any unconventional jungler that I do. Do you know why? It's because I usually do a route where I do one side of my clear, uh, one side of my jungle, and then I recall, and then I get the trailblazer and like f three pots, three pots at most. If I like three pots helps me so much on my early game. I can actually gank people and I can sustain. I don't have to go back, but 
now increasing it by 100 gold this is just awful i can't do that anymore i can't recall get my trailblazer um and it just sucks so much like i don't know uh so what i'm thinking is we have to like do another camp or something so i do four camps to get that extra 100 gold to get three pots or like you do three camps and recall and get the trailblazer just the trailblazer um yeah it just sucks to be honest uh so this is actually a really huge nerf to be honest i don't like it uh especially because i do my i do i do one route and that's the three camps on one side so it kind of sucks yeah it's uh bad um right here eh, 100 less gold people don't i don't know what this what does this build into i forgot like twin shadows lich bane art into consistency okay so lich bane um i forgot people who get lich bane but i think it's like twisted fate you know all these pokey champions and stuff uh twin shadows no one ever got this uh you might see it but 100 less gold it'll emphasize people to get it of course but i don't think it'll be emphasized that much so this is out tenacity as multiplicative which means it's less Giant's Belt can now build out Ruby Crystals. This means you might see people build stacking cri Ruby Crystals a lot more. Um, so, so you'll see like Ruby two Ruby Crystals and then someone gets like a Giant's Belt or something after that. Um, that's all I can say right now. Uh, it's not that big of a change here. Akali gets a buff because of her nerf. So that's kind of fine. Mm, I'm not sure who else uses a tech set Gunblade. I guess Jax, but no, he, no, he uses Blade Rune King and Triforce. Um... Yeah, I'm just going over like, uh, like big changes, not like little changes. So right here, um, like a bunch of bug fixes. I honestly never use this item yet, but you know, like in my last patch patch rundown, um, I still said this item was a really bad item, and I still think it is, uh, even though all these gets a buff. Ooh, wait, Void Spawn get gains bonus damage from. High percent of the summoning champion. Ooh, okay, maybe. I don't know. I still think it's a bad item. Honestly, no one would ever get this. It doesn't give any team fight stats. Uh, it's like a guardian angel without a without the passive, I think. So it's still a bad, really bad uh, item. I don't think you'll ever see it in competitive or in like high elo. And I think that is it. Um, so with DFG being taken out, I want to re elaborate. I think overall the mid meta looks something like Zara, Ziggs, Azir. Ari, all these pokey champions without the assassins trying to kill them um i think they'll just be dominant since you know no more assassins and that's about it uh you're looking at that kind of pokey mid meta again so anyways this is the patch rundown i hope you guys enjoyed it it is 23 minutes hope you guys enjoyed the adventure again i i said um it was going to be fast um i have to do a tldr so my TLR DR looks like this, like this. DFG, uh, dislike. I'm a tank. I don't really care. Overlapping CC. You'll notice some things that you previously now can't. Tristana. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't think I'll go over this. Um, I might just post it, post my notes into the description. So, yeah, I'll just post probably post this in the description. Uh, that's about it. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.